One time, um, Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahmatullahi alayhi, he developed a cyst in his back. And he used to constantly say, Alhamdulillah. Never complained, always saying Alhamdulillah. Doctor came, the Hakim, and he came and he said, Shaykh, where's the pain? He said, Alhamdulillah, I'm with Afiyah. He said, okay, this one's a little... Very, very pious. We're going to have to take another route to explain to him. We have to try a different route with this one. So he put his hand on his shoulder. Sheikh, is the pain over here? Alhamdulillah, I have afia. Okay? Is the pain there? Alhamdulillah, I have afia there. Okay? What about here? Huna, as'alullah, al afia. He said, over there I ask Allah for afi, but alhamdulillah. Even in his pain, he did not complain, but he still praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, Allah blessed us with a lot of wealth. If you travel across the world and travel around the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many ni'mats. A lot of us are immigrants. A lot of us are we have ties to back home, whether it may be India, Pakistan, Egypt, Palestine, Jordan, mashallah, there's a rainbow of people in this masjid. When we go back and we visit our families, and we see the situation that they're living in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has blessed us in every single form. Recently, I was in China, a couple of years ago, one, two years ago. And they have so many Muslims in China. Has anyone been to China here? No? Chinatown? Not even close enough. I went to China and I asked for, fortune, I asked for sesame chicken and fortune cookies. They said this is American Chinese food. They said, in China, we don't feed this. I said, oh, khalas, give me something else, some Chinese food. Very different than the American cuisine they have here. Masajid, I had an opportunity, alhamdulillah, to pray in a masjid that was 500 years old in China. I had a chance to pray in a masjid that was 1100 years old in China. I had a chance to pray in one masjid in Xi'an that was 1300 years old. But even though there's old masajid and there's enormous masajid, enormous masajid, the, bigger than click, which is hard to believe because Houston takes the first place in having the largest masjids. We can make a Guinness Book world record over here, inshallah, the largest mosques. But subhanallah, the people there, because of the communist government, they try not to go to the masjid. So they're not in the eyes of the government. Up to the age of 16 or 18 years old, you cannot even convince a child to go to the masjid. Today we have masjids that are open. We have food and drinks and everything around us. But subhanallah, the parents know when they go, when the children go home, they open the fridge, the fridge is full. Mom, there's nothing to eat at home. I'm going to go out and eat. And I was last, I, I drink only bottled water generally. Last night I was holding a bottled water in my hand and I said, Subhanallah, we've reached such a level that Allah makes us pay for even our water. That Allah makes us pay for even our water. The ni'mats that are free and that are normal for everyone else in the world. When a person gets so much into the dunya and materialism, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them pay for the simplest of things. There was this jeans that I saw one of the boys in the masjid walk in with. And subhanallah, the jeans and the shorts, there was not that much of a ratio and difference, the amount of cloth that was being used. There were so many holes in the jeans. So I called the kid aside, I said, you know, I was going to take him. I said, where's your car? Let me walk to your car. You know, I said, I'll talk to him. Maybe he needs something, needs some money or something. Walking in with ripped jeans. See, Marshall, he has a brand new car. 
And I said, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu said, Inna Allah jameel yuhibbu al-jamal. Allah, inna Allah yuhibbu an yira athar ni'matihi ala abdihi. That Allah likes to see his ni'mas on his servants. He said, he said, no, no, this is a very expensive jeans. I said, why? I said, it's half of it's missing. He said, that's why it's so expensive. I said, subhanallah. I said, you should have just bought it from Walmart and given it to me. I have scissors in my office. And paid me instead for this. I said, when the people have become so focused in the dunya, Allah makes them pay enormous amount of money for ripped clothes, tattered clothes. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa told the sahaba, he said, I don't fear poverty upon you. It isn't poverty that, 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 that makes me scared that my ummah will not have something to eat or drink. But what scares me is that Allah will open the dunya before you. And as the dunya is open, you're going to be forgetful of the ni'mas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of my teachers, Sheikh Suleiman Choksi, he came from India to South Africa for the first time. Sometimes we think to ourselves, I don't have enough. All of us, we think we don't have enough. So he came, and in South Africa, there's the crime rate in South Africa is very high. So when the people would go on vacation, they would have some scholar, imam, or hafid stay at their house. So that for the next one, two weeks, at least my house is being secured. Because over there, you cannot even trust the police. The police rob you too over there. I lived there for five years. We were more scared of the police robbing us than the, the normal people robbing us. So he says when he was there, he came first time from India. They put him in a house. They said, okay, this is where the light switch is. This is where the security alarm is. And then he showed him a fish tank. Like the one you have outside. And he said, this is a fish tank. And you feed it every day. Said, okay. He's never seen fish in someone's home before. Okay. The guy left. So he went the next day, took some fish food, gave it to the fish. So the fish ate it all. He said, oh, poor fish, they're hungry. He said, so I took some more and dropped it inside. They ate that too. I said, khalas, I'll just throw the whole thing inside. They'll keep on eating when they want. So he dropped the whole bucket inside. He said, I woke up the next morning, and subhanallah, all the fishes are floating in bed. So I said, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. So I called my friend immediately and I said, what happened here? He told me to feed him, I fed them and they died. Was it expired food? They said, no. How much did you give him? He said, I dumped the whole thing inside. He said, you were just supposed to give a speck of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِي لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah says, if I was to give you and give you and give you, you will completely forget me. And be unmindful of me. And you will transgress against me. Walakin, Allah said, but then I give you a little bit, I take a little bit. So you remember. And you're constant, constantly thankful and grateful to me. And you're constantly aligned to me. Not just when something comes and it is in accordance to how we want it to be. But when circumstances and situations are swished, even there we turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A simple commodity of security. Being able to come inside the masjid, pray salah, and go back home. Something so simple. A lot of places in the world, people can't do this thing. And we don't even, the problem with us today is we don't even consider the ni'mat of Allah as a ni'mat. We look at the ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we look at it as if it is something very low. I can get better. We are in a very materialistic world. iPhone 6 came out. No, but I need the iPhone 6S. The 6S came out. Oh no, my, this phone is old now. I said, how old? It's one year old. There's an update. What's the update? There's no iPhone jack in there. There's no headphone jack in there. I said, how is that the update? <laughs> it looks like it's going down now. And subhanAllah, we are paying money for this. We're paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for this. And the more we chase the dunya, the more we become mindful of Allah, and unmindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we become infatuated. The more we try to feed our ego.